I'm David, a 19-year-old first-year medical student originally from Texas. I'm currently attending college in New York City. My parents live in Dallas, and it's just the two of them at home. My dad works as a surgeon at a university hospital, and my mom is a stay-at-home mom. After graduating high school, I moved to New York, and it's been almost four months since I started living on my own. In July, inspired by my dad who is a surgeon, I studied hard and made it into medical school, but I haven't been able to experience the campus life I was hoping for. Of course, I need to focus on my studies, but I also wanted to do things typical of a college student, like hanging out with friends and joining clubs. However, due to a lack of money, that wasn't possible. My parents are paying for my tuition, but I have to cover all other living expenses myself. Besides attending classes, I juggle jobs like tutoring, event staff, and working at a bar, but it is still a struggle to barely make ends meet each month, including paying rent and living expenses. Since I could adjust my shifts, hopping from one job to another was a regular occurrence. Weekends were a prime time to earn, so I never really had a day off. It was tough both mentally and physically. I get sleepy during class, and I'm so tired when I get home late at night that I can't muster the energy to study. I'm worried I might have to repeat the year because I can't keep up with my classes. If things continue this way, I won't be able to focus on my studies, which should be my top priority. I felt anxious and desperate. I even called my mom to ask for some financial support, even if it was a small amount. Since my dad was rarely home due to his busy job, my mom managed the household finances. I thought it would be possible to receive financial support, given my dad's income, but my mom said that they didn't have the money and that just paying for tuition was already difficult, so sending money was out of the question. If that's the case, there was nothing I could do. Most of my friends who were living on their own received financial support from their parents, and I envied them. But I decided to continue working hard at my jobs. The midterm exams ended, but I hadn't studied enough, and as expected, I had to take retests. I managed to finish the retests at the beginning of August and then started my summer vacation. I plan to earn as much money as possible during the long break by working various jobs every day. After the summer break, I intend to prioritize my studies, so I plan to reduce my work shifts. That will decrease my income, so I decided to cut back even more on my living expenses. Now, for meals, I try to save on food expenses by eating instant noodles, bread, and discounted pre-packed meals. Whenever I needed to go somewhere, I used my bike to avoid spending on transportation costs. I grew up in a well-off family, so I never had to worry about money before. I never expected to lead such a life of extreme poverty after moving. It was a very busy time, but I frequently kept in touch with a college friend through text messages. Seeing fun photos from them made me sad, realizing how different life could be, even among students at the same university. My friends often invited me out, but I had to reluctantly decline because I neither had the money nor the time. Let's go somewhere that doesn't cost anything, one of our classmates sent me a message. Nah, I'm working every day, plus I'm heading back home for the holiday season, so I won't be around, I replied. Are you sure you're okay? You always seem tired at school, and I think you're working too much, my friend expressed concern. I've got the physical stamina, and I need to earn my living expenses. Let's meet up once school starts again. With that response, I headed to the bar where I worked. But shortly after, something happened, I collapsed during my shift. It was a busy Friday with lots of customers and orders, and while I was carrying drinks, I felt dizzy. I don't remember much after that, and when I came to, I found myself in a hospital. According to the doctor, I collapsed due to exhaustion and malnutrition. I received four fluids and was allowed to go home that same day. I immediately called my boss at the bar to apologize. 
My boss told me that after I collapsed, he called my name, but I was too out of it to respond, so he called an ambulance right away. He had also contacted my parents. My boss said, you've been taking a lot of shifts, and I relied too much on that. Sorry about that. I want you to rest easy for the rest of the month. That meant a cut in my income. Riding the subway home from the hospital, I wondered if I should take on more tutoring jobs, and I found myself at a loss. I was supposed to work at the bar the next day, but that suddenly turned into a day off. I decided to just quietly stay in bed. Checking my phone, I noticed that I had received a message from my friend while I was unconscious. I responded to the message and explained why my reply was delayed. Upon learning about my situation, my friend decided to come over. He bought groceries at the supermarket and made spaghetti for me. While eating the meal he had kindly prepared, our conversation turned to the topic of living expenses for someone living alone. When I mentioned that I wasn't receiving any financial support from home, my friend was surprised. That's why you've been working that hard. Your dad's a doctor, you should be getting some support, no? I asked mom, and she said they're barely managing with just my tuition. Really? But you're an only child, right? Maybe if you ask, they could send a little support. Mom said even a small amount of support was out of the question. No way, that doesn't make sense. I hate to say this, but maybe your dad is sick and can't work. I started thinking it over. My dad is a doctor and used to drive a luxury car. Our house is in an upscale neighborhood, and I went to private schools my whole life, so why would mom suddenly say they have no money? I suddenly became worried. I immediately messaged my mom, are you both okay? And she replied after a while, we're fine, but I couldn't relax, thinking maybe they were just saying that to keep me from worrying. Since I had planned to go home for the holidays, I decided to talk to my parents about this. After thanking my friend, he said, I'll be waiting for some souvenirs. I felt grateful to have such a friend. The holiday season came, and I took the cheapest flight I could find back home. I could only stay for a night and a day because of my job, but I was looking forward to it. When I arrived, my parents greeted me at the door. My dad seemed surprised when he saw me. You've lost a lot of weight. Really? I had noticed myself, but apparently, I looked quite different. My mom was also taken aback and fell silent. For lunch, my mom had prepared things like salad, soup, and chicken wings, and for the first time in a long while, the three of us sat down to eat together. As soon as we sat down, my dad looked worried and asked, You look thinner. Are you eating properly? I told him the truth. Not really, it's been a while since I had such a luxurious meal. What do you usually eat? Cafeteria food. Nah, the cafeteria is too expensive for me. Is it that expensive? It's about five dollars or so. Hearing that, my dad looked puzzled. Is the money I've been sending enough for you? I was confused and responded, huh? I haven't been getting any money. My dad was shocked. What do you mean? So you mean to tell me you haven't received any money for the past four months? I haven't received any. Have you really been sending money? I had asked your mom to transfer $2,000 every month into your account. Really? I was surprised. Mom told me that your finances were tight and that she couldn't afford to send any money. Dad looked perplexed. We have enough money. Paisley, have you been sending money to David properly? Mom looked down silently. I was worried that maybe Dad got sick or something and couldn't work, and that's why the money wasn't coming. No, I've been working as usual. Really? That's a relief. 
I was somewhat relieved, but then why hadn't any money been sent to me? I was baffled. Dad, what's going on? Mom still remained silent, refusing to meet our eyes. Come on, don't stay silent. Can you explain? When my dad pressed her, my mom said quietly, I haven't sent any money. What? I haven't spent any money to David. Hearing this, both my dad and I were stunned. What? Why not? Dad was incredulous. There are just so many expenses. What kind of expenses? Isn't our home mortgage already paid off? Thinking she could no longer hide the truth, my mom dropped a bombshell. I've been keeping the money for myself. I was dumbstruck. I read online that medical students can earn more than regular students with tutoring jobs, so I thought you'd be okay. I asked you to send me even just a small amount of money, but honestly, I didn't realize you were that strapped for cash. My mom continued in a matter-of-fact tone. There was a call from David's workplace recently, saying you collapsed from overwork. I was also shocked to see how thin you've become today. My dad interrupted, David collapsed? What happened? It seemed my dad hadn't been informed about the recent events, so I explained. You collapsed from overwork and malnutrition. Yeah, but it wasn't anything serious, I assured him. Paisley, why didn't you tell me? Dad asked, clearly upset. I'm sorry, I was afraid you'd find out I wasn't sending the money. Hearing this, my dad was furious. This is outrageous. David had to work until he collapsed because he didn't have any money. I didn't mean any harm, my mom said without any sign of guilt. One of you been using all the money for? My dad confronted my mom. After a brief pause, she spoke up. Well, actually, I have some debts. What? Those were unimaginable words coming from her, who always seemed to perfectly manage the household and even took care of the garden flowers. The money was used to pay off my debts. Debt? How much do you owe? My dad asked with a look of disbelief. My mom, still looking down, said, about $100,000. $100,000? I was shocked by the amount. My dad sighed deeply. Why do you have so much debt? I got into gambling, basically. She had gotten herself into gambling debts without our knowledge. Why would you even start something like that? My dad was holding his head in his hands. About two years ago, I started gambling just to kill time. I won some money, and it felt really good at first. I only used small amounts, but going to the casino became a habit, and I started betting more and more. I couldn't stop, and it led to that amount, she explained, remorseful. I had never gambled, so I couldn't understand why she couldn't stop. Yes, I kept trying to win back what I lost, but I ended up losing more often than winning. I even dipped into our savings, so you spent more than just the debt amount, my dad yelled at my mom. How much of our savings did you use? About $30,000. I stopped withdrawing more because I thought you would find out, she looked like she was about to cry. If you had talked to me about it earlier, it might have been better. With that amount, you could have worked part-time and paid it back little by little, right? When he said this, she shouted, I absolutely don't want to work part-time. Get a grip. You racked up the debt yourself. What are you saying? He was visibly angry. I've been a stay-at-home mom for so long, there's no way I can work now. That's why I borrowed money from payday lenders. I was stunned by her selfish reasoning. Then the interest piled up, and the debt just grew. 
I got involved with various lenders, and now I can't make payments anywhere. I'm completely overwhelmed. My dad sighed again. Are you still gambling in this situation? He asked. Yes, I see no choice. Then I'll pay off the debt for you, he said, clearly. Really? My mom stood up from her chair, her face brightening with joy. I knew you would help me. She rushed towards him, looking moved. However, things didn't turn out as favorably for her. But this is your severance. Let's get a divorce. What? I will never agree to a divorce. Her face turned from joy to terror, like she had been cast down from heaven to hell. You continued gambling even knowing David was struggling, right? You kept borrowing money, endangering the family. My dad continued. That's true, but I can't continue as a family with a wife who prioritizes gambling over her son. No way. She finally burst into tears. I'll never gamble again, please forgive me, she pleaded, but he seemed resolute. Your gambling is likely an addiction. You'll need to see a psychiatrist and undergo long-term treatment. It's not uncommon for people to relapse into gambling during treatment. I'm not addicted. I can stop anytime. No, if this continues, we could all end up destitute. I have to separate, not just for my sake, but stop burdening David any further. I'll stop from tomorrow. She did not seem to grasp the severity of her inability to stop gambling. I was deeply anxious about the amount of debt and her pathological gambling behavior. In exchange for paying your severance, there will be no division of assets, my dad stated. What? I can't agree to those terms. If you don't pay back the debt, they might seize your account. She fell silent. I never imagined coming home after a long time would lead to this situation. I was just unsettled by my parents fighting. No, Dad, don't you think we can hold off on deciding about divorce? Maybe take some time to cool off and think it over? I'm sorry, David, but that's not possible, he said calmly. I thought he might have decided on divorce in a fit of despair, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Lunch ended in a heavy atmosphere, and I went to my room. I lay down on the sofa, but I could still hear my parents arguing. It wasn't much of an argument, my mom was hysterically screaming, and my dad responded firmly. I got so fed up with college and home that I just went to sleep out of frustration. The next morning, my mom looked awful, probably from crying all night. I had planned to stay at home a bit longer, but the oppressive atmosphere made me decide to leave early. My dad drove me to the airport. David, I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused, he apologized to me. No, it's not your fault, Dad. I'm grateful for the chance to attend medical school, I reassured him. I'll start transferring an allowance directly to your account from now on, so don't worry. Yeah, thanks, Dad. It really helps. I know things are tough, but take care. I flew back to New York. The rest of the summer vacation was busy with work, passing by in a flash. Still, I was constantly worried about my parents. A few months later, I heard that my mom finally agreed to the divorce. My dad's steadfastness broke her resistance. As previously discussed, my dad took on her debts, and in return, there was no asset division in their divorce agreement. I have mixed feelings about my parents getting divorced, but it's not all bad news. Now that I'm receiving an allowance from my dad, I've been able to cut back on work and focus more on my studies. I might even get to hang out with friends. I heard from my grandmother on my mother's side that despite the divorce over her gambling, my mom was back at the slot machines every day. She quickly racked up more debt. 
Her family couldn't afford to cover her debts, so my mom reluctantly started working part-time. She's currently attending therapy to overcome her gambling addiction. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.